And we're back. Now we're going to add the index.jsp JSP file to our guessing game with JSP only example project. The JSP file was designed to handle the view of a web application. As such, it needs to send HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, plus any assets, to the browser on the client side. These elements can make up a big part of any JSP page. But some things in the JSP page can be read and executed on the server side. And here, we need to include Java inside the JSP file. So when we start to write the JSP file, we're going to need to be able to tell the server which part is Java and which part is not. The Java delimiter in JSP is an angle bracket, same angle bracket you might use with HTML, but followed by a percent sign. A special delimiter is an angle bracket percent followed by an equal. Here, we can put an expression. This would be a Java expression, and the idea is this works something like a system.out.println but prints the results of the expression directly to the output, as we'll find out that is on something known as a response object. Another special type of command in JSP is called the page command. Here you can see we have the Java delimiters, and inside we start it with the word page. Page provides a way to define attributes that apply to the entire JSP page. For example, we might have page and then something that sets the language here, Java, so the server knows what language to use, the type of content, text and HTML, and then some other page encoding information. Another one that's very important for our use is the page import command. This is just like the import you might use in Java. In this example, we're importing all of the classes found in the game classes package. When a request is received by the server, there are two objects that are automatically created by the server. These are known as the request and the response objects. The request object is created by the server when a request is received, and it represents all those things related to the request. So when you're requesting an asset by clicking on a link, typing in a URL, or doing some other action on the client side, a request is generated and sent to the server, and this request object will be created to hold all of the data, and it will include methods that let us work with the data related to that request. There are many methods related to the request object. We'll use a few of them very regularly. In addition, when the request is received, we need something to hold on to all the stuff we're going to send back to the client until the time we're ready to send it back, and this is called the response object. So the response object is created to represent our response to the client. This will hold data for that response. And by this, we mean any of the HTML, J CSS, JavaScript, and content that we might need to send back for the client to render the page appropriately. And it will hold methods that we can work with this response data. Many times when we're working with JSP, we want the user to see a form so we can collect some data from the user. Here's where we're allowed users to enter data to send back to the server. All form components, as you should have learned by now in HTML, fit within a form tag. Here's an example that has several parameters. ID gives an ID to the form so we can add JavaScript to connect to it. A name, in this case my ID and my name are set to be the same. A couple new ones you might not know about and that we're going to concentrate on here because they're very important to JSP. The action. The action parameter defines what will happen when the form is submitted. Submitted is actually an important word to know because there are various ways this can be submitted, including, as we'll use in our example, a special input component called a submit button. When the form is submitted in this example, the browser will make a request to the server to get the guess.jsp file. Other times we may use Java code in the action to represent the event that will happen, or even calls to JavaScript methods. The method parameter here defines how the request will be submitted to the server, usually a get or a post. When we make the request, there are a few ways defined by HTTP protocol that allow us to make that request. Get and post are two of about six of those. So we're going to make a request and we need to send some data. We're going to ask for an asset and send some data along 
for that asset to use. The two primary methods that we'll use are get. Get uses a small amount of data. In addition, as we'll see with the get method, all of the data from the form is going to be actually concatenated to the URL. So if we're working with this in a web browser, you'll be able to see the data, the variable names, and the value pairs concatenated to the URL at the top of your browser. This has some advantages, such as with Google, where a search term is included in the URL, and you can actually bookmark a Google search because of that. Disadvantages, of course, is you would not want a password or a username to show up concatenated in the URL for fear that other people could see it over your shoulder. Post, on the other hand, sends the data more hidden within the message. It's encrypted within the entire request. Because of this, you can send larger amounts of data. The data is basically hidden within the request. I put hidden in quotes because a very sophisticated user with the right tools might be able to see that. And of course, the server itself can read whatever is there. With our game number example, we need to be able to store some data for multiple requests. For example, when we start the game, we create a random target value, and then we need to guess that over multiple guesses. Somehow we need to store that random target so we know whether the, each guess is correct or not. Storing data over multiple requests is called data persistence or also managing state. There are various mechanisms for managing state when we're working with Java web applications. So in object-oriented programming, the current values of an object's field is known as the object state. When we move between the server and the client, we often want to maintain the state of data values. As I mentioned for our example, the target value needs to be maintained back and forth as we make multiple guesses. But there's one hurdle with web applications. The HTTP protocol, which we rely on to send our request and response, is considered to be a stateless protocol. This means it has no memory. So somehow we have to overcome this and actively manage the state of the data values. For our current example, because we just haven't learned how to do the best ways of state management, we're going to use an old school web state management technique. Now this is not necessarily a good one, but it's one that we can readily understand giving a limited knowledge of Java web applications and HTML. Recall that input components of a form hold data on the client side. So if you have data on the client side in an input element, it's always sent back to the server. There is an input component called hidden. This is a form component that's much like a text component, except the user does not see that. Parenthetically, they can see that if they view the source. So that's one reason this is not a great way to do this, because if we hide our target in a hidden text box, if they view the source, they can cheat a little bit on the guessing game. We'll take advantage of that as we're debugging. Back again in our project, we see that we have, so far, game number .java class. We've also created a JUnit test in order to test our game number class and make sure we can move forward with confidence. We've two JSP files, but these are just the stubs. They have not been created yet. And in this video, we're going to concentrate on building out the index.jsp file. So double click on that to open it up in the editor. Go ahead and double click on the tab to expand the view of index.jsp, and we'll get started. Notice we have the page command. This is delimited with our angle bracket percent. This one sets up the language that the server will use, the content type, primarily for the response, and page encoding, which is also for the response. Following that, we have just a little bit of HTML. Here's a quick reminder of what we're going to do with the index.jsp file. Index.jsp will take responsibility for initializing the game and setting a random target, and any other initialization of variables. Then it will be its responsibility to send a view back to the client side in order to obtain the first 
guess from the player. Finally, we'll need to send a request to our next JSP file. We also have a wireframe for index.jsp. We're going to want to provide a welcome message, some instructions, and then an input form. So really we have two parts to this, initializing the game and creating the view. Let's work first on a in game initialization. My preference is if I'm going to include Java, I try to do most of that separate from the view portion of the JSP, meaning I try to mix as little as possible the Java with the HTML. It's not possible to keep it totally separate, but we'll do the best we can. So I'm going to write my delimiters to put some Java. Some Java in here. What do I need to do? I'm going to initialize my game number variables. We have several of those. To represent our game number, we've created the game number class, if you recall. So we need to actually make that available. We can do that with an import statement, percent ampersand. Import is a page level command with the argument equal to import. And just to recall, I need the package name, which in this case is game stuff dot. And then specifically, I will pick the game number class that's there. What that does is, again, makes our Java class game number available for us to use whenever we're using Java within this JSP. Double click to get back to a larger view. We've got several game number variables to start with. For this example, I'm going to use our game number class to represent all the various numbers, even though we won't need to use some of the methods for some of the numbers. First, let's initialize our minimum and maximum range. Game number minimum equals new game number. And I'm going to specifically initialize that to zero. To set the maximum of the range. Game number maximum equals new game number and I'm going to set that to a thousand. Notice because we are inside these Java delimiters we're basically writing Java code. You should recognize this as just declaring a Java object based on the game number class and then instantiating it using one of the constructors. Another variable is the number of the guesses. First guess, second guess, and so forth. So number of guesses made. Let me call that one game. Number guesses equals new game number. I think I'm going to initialize that to 1. So we can say this is the first guess. You could initialize that to zero and then increment it at the appropriate time. Only two more values, but only one of those do we need to initialize. One value is the target, and then the final value we'll be dealing with is the actual guess from the user, but we can't get that until after index is run. So the only thing else we need to initialize is our target value. So let's create that. Target, game number, let's call it target, equals new game number. I'm going to use our no parameter constructor here because we're going to randomize it in just a moment with our random method. Notice I have made an error, so always watch out for those. You can tell by the red line, cannot be resolved to a type. As you get these errors, read them. Always read the errors. Then, over time, you'll understand what they mean and you'll have a list of things you can do 
once you understand the error to correct it. In this case, cannot be resolved to a type is because I do not have a game number with a lowercase n as actual type. So I just need to correct my spelling. Next step is to actually get a random value for the target. So let's do target dot set random. Need to give it the minimum. Well, we have our minimum. Remember, that's an object and not a primitive. So I need to use get value to actually get the integer value. Same thing for maximum. So basically, I've handed the value of 0 as a minimum range, 1,000 as maximum range, and my set random variable should come out somewhere at random in between. So we've seen a couple things so far. We have our page level commands, which set parameters for the entire page. So import game stuff game number, for example, just like in a Java class, is available to everything on this page whenever I need it. I have delimited some Java, and in very simple Java in this case, which we try to keep in all of our JSPs, kept most of the work, such as randomizing, inside of a model class. And we've declared the various objects that will hold the values we need to conduct the game. Next, we need to work on the view portion. This is primarily HTML, but when appropriate, we will actually include some of these values to be added to the response. Let's start by adjusting the title. Let's call it the world's best guessing game. I generally also like to take my title and make it a headline. So I'm going to copy that, put it in the body, and change it to H1 tags. We might want to change the headline just a little bit to make it more welcoming and say, welcome to the world's best guessing game. Let's add some excitement with an exclamation point. We need some instructions. That's going to be something along the lines of a paragraph that tells the user what to do. In this case, they need to guess a number. So please guess it, a number between two values. Now we could put 0 and 1,000, but what if we've decided to have the minimum at 500 and the maximum at a million? It's better if we replace these hard-coded values with the actual stored values that we've decided to use for the game. Those values are stored in a Java object. Recall from a previous slide that we have a special delimiter where we have our Java delimiters, the first part followed immediately, no space, by an equal sign. Then we can put an expression in here to return a value. The result of the expression will be printed at this point on the web page on the client. So let's use our minimum object dot get value. It will evaluate this expression, get a zero, and end up saying, please guess a number between zero and 1,000. So pretty much the same thing can be done for the 1,000, except, of course, that we need to change the object to our maximum. So we are getting a value from a Java expression, and it's being printed directly to the view. This is equivalent to what we do with a system.out.print statement in a regular Java application. Next, we need to get the guess from the user. To get input data from the user, of course, we need a form. So let's start with our form tag. I always like to include a name, even if I don't use it right away. You may want to use it later when I apply CSS or JavaScript. Similarly, for an ID, I'm going to call both of these guest form. What we definitely have to have for a JSP is an action. The action says, what should happen when this form is submitted? In our case, we're going to redirect back to the 
the game.jsp file back on our server. We're going to make a request to the server for the game.jsp file. That request also needs to be defined with the appropriate method. Now you could leave method off, and if you do, you always get a get statement by default. I generally prefer to type it in there so that if I come back, I can easily change it to post. And I can also read without having to think about the default value what the current method is. We're going to start with get and probably change it to post before we're finished with the entire application. Inside the form, we need two elements. We need something to get the guess and a way to submit the form. So let's label it with guess. I'm going to add the guess number. Recall the guess number is actually stored in our object called guesses. So let's do just like we did with our minimum and maximum. Let's go ahead and get the value. You might ask, why couldn't I just hard code a 1 here? And definitely you could do that. Remember, I'm trying to show you examples of how you can use Java objects within your JSP. And this case is a little bit contrived, but still simple enough where you can understand what's going on. Put a semicolon. Then I need to include a input type, a text box. Let's call this guess. This is the user's guess here. Different than guesses. Guesses is the number of guesses. And this should be enough. The next component we need is a submit button. I'm going to add a paid paragraph command around my guest text boxes so that there's a little bit of space between the items. And then I'm going to include the submit button. Input, type, equal. There are actually three different types of buttons. A button, reset, or submit. If you use button, you have to supply a JavaScript to show what to do when that button is clicked. Reset will reset the form. And submit will do the action we require. It will cause the form to be submitted. And then the action in the form tag will be executed. This is the one we're going to use. I'll call the name submit. I always include names, many times IDs. And in this case, value is important because that's going to be the caption of the button. Let's put go as the caption. I'm going to do a shorthand here for my input tag. And we're almost complete thing we have not yet done is make sure we can hold on to these values that we've generated. Specifically, we need to hold on to the minimum, the maximum, the number of guesses, and the target. Once the server sends these values back to the client, the server forgets about them. So when we make our next guess, we need to kind of remind the server what those values are going to be. An old school way to do this is to use input hidden. Type equal hidden. We're going to want to include a name. Let's say the first one is our minimum. And a value to put in there. How can we put the value into this hidden text box? Remember, we can basically print to any part of the web page using our delimiter angle bracket percent equal. Even within an HTML tag. So I put percent equal. Then my expression, in this case, calling the method from minimum. And now I have the value. And just to organize it a little bit, let's put a BR tag at the end. Similarly, we can do the same for maximum. Our target and our number of guesses. All we have to do is copy that and change things appropriately. Be very careful if you're copying and pasting that you do it 
in a well thought out way and that you're and that you have great attention to detail to make the changes that are needed. This is a pretty simple JSP file and I'm basically finished. Just to review, the server will load and read these page commands and it will know that these are consistent items for the entire page. The server will then see here's some Java because of this delimiter and it will execute the Java code. In this case our Java code simply creates several game number objects and establishes their initial values. The final delimiter says Java's done for a while. The server will then start looking at the HTML. HTML is copied directly from the file to the response as it's creating the view. It's stuff that will be sent directly back to the client. As we read through the HTML to, to execute our wireframe design, most of the time it's just HTML and text content. But we do come upon a couple places where we have printed out values of our Java game number objects using the get value method. Some of these the user will see in the actual body of the page. In other cases, they're going to be hidden in text boxes. Other things we used in this was the form. We talked about how the action is very important. It says what will happen when the form is submitted, and we used a submit button to make that submission happen. The user will be in charge of that by clicking the submit button. We used the method get, which means that all the data in the form, the guest data, the submit data, minimum, maximum, target, and guesses data, will be concatenated to the URL as it's sent back with the request. One thing I forgot to mention is the name of your form components. These are very important because they're kind of like the variable names of the data you're sending back. The data is sent back as name value pairs, so what the user types into the guess checkbox we'll see is sent back as guess equals some number. Similarly, if we view the source, we'll see minimum is stored and we will see that it is also concatenated as minimum equals to the URL. Make sure you save things. We're going to show you how to run this and see some results. Now one thing we should expect is this form should come up. We should be able to enter a value, but when we click on the submit button, we should see that the game.jsp is just very minimal. It does exist. It'll show a title and nothing in the body. To execute a JSP web application, right-click on the project name. Scroll down to Run As. We're going to run as server. Recall that when we set up the project to begin with, we specified a particular server for it to run on. For most of us, that's the preview server that came with Eclipse. Click on Run on Server and watch what happens. We should see a dialog box come on. You may have to choose the server. If so, under the basic folder, pick J2EE Preview. This is the one we created the application to go with. Click on Next. Here you would see different things that have been configured to run on that server. Most of the time in testing, I like to have it very clean, where the only thing in the configured side is the guessinggame.jsp. On the available, you'll have anything that's opened in your current Eclipse workspace. Once that's to your satisfaction, hit finish and watch what happens. Down in the server area, you'll see that the server is running. After a moment or two, your default browser should load up with the index.jsp form. Here we see, welcome to the world's best guessing game. Please guess a number between 0 and 1,000. Guess number 1. Everything looks pretty good. Let's view the source just to see if those work look well. Right-clicking on mine and hitting Page View Source. Notice I'm in Firefox. Viewing source may be different in your particular browser. What happened to the Java? Notice none of the Java is included. All of the Java was executed on the server side and then forgotten and not included in the response. Only HTML and some of the results from our Java expressions, where we use the percent equal delimiter, have been included. 
as we scroll down, we see even the hidden text boxes, minimum stored as a thousand, maximum a thousand. Our target or our guest number came out randomly as 169 in this case, and we've had one guess. These are data that's going to be sent to the game.jsp for its use in determining what to show the next time. Let's try a guess. Good first guess in this game is 500, directly between 0 and 1,000. If I hit go, remember we expect to see very little on the next page. But there was no error message. It did go to the game.jsp. Remember, game.jsp has nothing in it except for a title which says insert title here. So it did go to that. Notice as I scroll through the URL, we see that all the data from the form, including the value of the submit button, has been concatenated to the URL. Notice the URL stops with a question mark, and then after that we say name value pairs, guess equal 500, submit equals go, minimum equals zero, etc. This is called a query stream as we talk about web applications, anything after the question mark. One interesting thing in Eclipse, before we leave this and move on to building our game.jsp file, is that my Eclipse is set up to come up in a particular browser. Some of you may have seen the index.jsp view come up in a tab within Eclipse itself. You can make adjustments to that. Under the window menu item, you should see web browser, and there you can choose internal web browser, allows the view to come up in a tab in Eclipse. Default will be whatever is default on your system. I chose to use Firefox. Things work well with me, plus my go-to for most things is Chrome, and I leave that open for other things. This has been a Piercy production.